Hey, welcome back again. Good morning to all of the options traders. Well, a topic that comes up a lot when we talk about strategies is this idea of light versus heavy tails. And you hear a lot of commentary about this from options traders and why it's such a great idea and such a statistical advantage to write these out of the money options, especially out of the money puts. The problem is, is that in the stock market, stock price returns are based on what's called a log normal distribution. But the Black-Scholes model actually converts those by doing what's called a, a log transformation so that they follow a normal curve. And unfortunately, a lot of people misinterpret that and they say, oh, well, if I look at a normal curve, the chances of going more than two and a half or three standard deviations out are so slim that now this looks like it's free money. And that's not understanding the difference of light versus heavy tails because that's where a lot of these traders get themselves into trouble. So what is this whole idea of light versus heavy tails, and why can it be so problematic for people who like to write naked options? Let's go find out, and as always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated and helps to promote the channel. So here is our friend, the normal bell curve. And remember that it's symmetrical. The left half looks exactly like the right half. The current stock price is always right here at the center. So as the stock price moves, this bell curve shifts up and down. And of course, as time passes, it's getting skinnier too because there's less time. But the overall shape is staying the same. Now, down below, we have what are called standard deviations. And this is a one standard deviation move, plus or minus one, which is shown by the green area. And 68% of your data, more or less, is going to fall in that green region. About 95% of your data will fall in the green plus blue. That's plus and minus two standard deviations. And then essentially all of your data will fall within plus or minus three, which is the entire curve. Now remember, technically these little standard deviations keep going and going. There's a fourth and a fifth and so on. But the amount of area under there is so small, it's not really worth talking about, at least most of the time. And therein lies the catch. So here's this whole idea of light versus heavy tails. Whenever we talk about a distribution or a bell curve that has light tails, it's data that doesn't have large variations. So think of things like coin flips or human heights. So for example, if you look in the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest human ever recorded Robert Wadlow at 8 feet 11 inches. But still, when you think about it, how many people there are and how long we've had recorded history, it's not a real wide variation in the numbers. We don't have people that are 30 feet tall. They're all still within a fairly narrow range. Football games exhibit what we would call light tails. So, for instance, here's a chart of the past 56 Super Bowls. Now, these are the actual point spreads, in other words, after the game. And you can see 1 to 11 point spreads were about 46% of the time, 11 to 21, about 28, 29% of the time, and so on. So, can we get a 41 to 51 point spread? Yeah, but only about 2% of the time. But still, relatively speaking, anywhere from 1 to 50 is still a fairly narrow range of potential numbers. If we look at our coin tosses, if we toss a coin 20 times, the chances that we get exactly 10, or a 50-50 split, show up right here at 18%. That's the height of that red bar. So would you have more confidence if you did 50 flips? Most people think, yes, that that number is going to go up, maybe 30 or 40%. It doesn't. It goes the other direction. So for instance, if we go to 50 tosses, the chances of getting an exact 50-50 split of 25 heads and 25 tails will be 11% of the time. And if we go to 100 tosses, it's cut down to 8% of the time. So remember that the width of the bell curve, the standard deviation, in trading terms is actually called the volatility. So here's our coin flips. There's 20, 50, and 100. So just think of this as more volatility. These curves are getting shorter and wider. So the more volatility, the less confident you are about observing the average. And that's what we're seeing here. 
By flipping the coin more often, we start inviting these possibilities for getting extreme events. However, this also kind of misses the point. It looks like the data are spreading out, that we're getting kind of squishing it from the center of the curve out into the tails, and we're inviting more area into the tails. And it's really the opposite. We're pushing more of the data toward the center, just not the dead center. So one way we can show this is that instead of looking at just a single point right there, the exact 50-50 split, let's look at maybe a plus or minus 5% range. So if we flip a coin 20 times, the average again would be 10, but 5% of 20 is 1. So a 5% range would be 9 to 11. We're just doing the average of 10 plus or minus 1. And now the question is, what happens to this range? All right, so here's our bell curve. What's going to happen is that the data will move toward the center. They're going to move from the tails toward the center. Now it is true we're starting to flatten in the dead center, but more of the information out here in the tails is moving towards the center. So we're starting to see less and less data out here. So for example, here's 20 flips. There's our 5% range, 9 to 11. Now the average of getting exactly 10 heads and 10 tails would happen about 17.6% of the time, or about 18% of the time. But look at what happens to the range. If we look at this range of 9 to 11, 9 to 11 heads or tails, almost 50%. Now, if we bump that up to, let's say, 100 flips, dead center would be 50. But the range would be 45 to 55. Remember, we're taking 5%, in this case of 100, so we take 50 plus 5, we get 55. 50 minus 5, we get 45. If we look at that range, that's going to happen 73% of the time. But if we want to look at just an exact split of 50, it's only 8% of the time. So look what's happening as we start increasing the number of flips. See, most people think that the data are moving out into the tails. And it's not really. What's going on is we are shrinking that. Look at these numbers. Continually falling. But if we look at the range, plus and minus 5%, it's actually increasing. Look, there's 70s, 80s, up into the 90s. We could keep pushing this until we're virtually 100% certain we're going to be plus or minus 5%. So those are the light tails. Now, what about heavy tails? Sometimes you'll hear them called fat tails. Fat tails are technically a subset of heavy tails, but it's kind of more of a technical distinction. But this is where you have data that has large variations. You will have fewer observations that greatly affect the average and other statistical properties. That's really the whole idea of heavy tails. You get just a handful, but they are so powerful that they greatly affect the mean and the standard deviation and everything else but that does not mean that their probabilities are greater. So for instance, let's say incomes would be a heavy-tailed distribution or a fat-tailed distribution. When you often hear a lot is the graduating class for Bill Gates' high school has an average income measured into the hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, that's probably not true per person. Statistically, it's true, but that's because you had one person, Bill Gates, that's measured in the billions of dollars. So the probability is extremely low, but it greatly affects the averages. When you look at things like pandemics, and of course, our friend, stock prices. So here's where heavy tails come into play and why they can be so dangerous for people writing naked options. So let's take a look at Ford. So I've shown this chart before for other demonstrations, but it's a really good one for fat tails as well. Now, when this was shot, the current implied volatility for the options was about 15.5%. That's shown in this little red box down here. It's a little hard to read, so I just put it up here for everyone. The 52-week historic volatility, which would be measured by the stock, was about 12% to 47%. So most people would look at this and go, ah, 15% isn't really all that volatile because 
20% is the average for the SPY. And so you would look at this or for the VIX as well, and you would say, well, this is kind of on the light side. Let me sell these naked options. But when you understand that stock prices exhibit fat tails, we get a different picture. So if we look at the daily returns of Ford, meaning that if Ford is up 1% for the day, that would be the return of that day. And we're going to measure that with these bars. Look at this. This is a one-year period. This bar right here is pushing six standard deviations, which you would expect to occur once every 1.4 million years. These bars right here, pushing the eight standard deviation mark, would be expected to occur, by chance, about once every billion years. And so if we look at this data right here in a histogram, look at this. Look at these tails way out here. And see, people think that these are becoming more likely. They're not. They're extremely unlikely, but that's the whole point of a fat-tailed distribution. More of the data are moving towards the center, but you've got these guys out here that really pack a punch if they occur. So when you have naked puts, the thing to remember, don't use naked puts or naked calls for that matter because of the high probability of success that you might see from your broker's platform or by looking at a normal distribution. The one loss you may incur could wipe out your account. And the reason is fat tails with individual stocks. So what's one way to counter this? Well, fairly simple strategy would be to consider wide vertical spreads. Instead of, let's say, selling the $100 put, sell the $100 put and buy the 95. Sell the 100 and buy the 90. Buy the 80. But buy something just so you can define that risk. And if you do that, you'll be making better decisions. And that's what's going to give you better outcomes in the long run. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a Candlesticks and Technical Analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.